all right we are at the aws console let's start the static website hosting everything from the scratch we'll go to s3 we need s3 because uh, we need to keep the html files especially the error page and the landing page so we'll click on create bucket so let's give it a name cloud guru amit let's uh, go down let's uh, uncheck this we need uh, this thing uh, i acknowledge we don't need versioning everything looks good let's create a bucket now okay someone took my name let's create something give it a number uh let's now try to create this one all right so now the bucket is uh, created so let's uh, now upload uh, the files which are uh, present on my computer so we have uh, uh, basically two files index.html uh, let me show you what it has so you can create these files index.html is our landing page right uh, if you want to uh, create such html file just open a notepad put a name of the file and see if the extension is .html because the type is .html similarly uh, create another uh, notepad uh, another html file for the error page because uh, let's see if there is a website uh, if someone mistypes the website so it will display an error so let's now upload these files let's click on upload let's uh, browse these files on our computer so let's uh, select uh, both the files error and index i'll get down to you uh, like explain bucket policy in a moment but let's now first upload these files because these are uh, required let's click on upload it takes a while okay so we uh, got the two files now let's go back to the bucket itself so in the uh, buckets let's uh, check the uh, permission tab under uh, permission tab we have the bucket policy so we have we need to put a bucket policy um, for uh, get objects so our, uh, we need to put the correct name of our bucket uh, it, it will be 007 because we didn't get this name as mentioned so let's uh, copy paste this thing I've already done the homework uh, let's click on edit let's paste it yep so we have successfully pasted let's delete one extra line click on save changes so we have uh, edited the bucket policy now uh, we need to uh, enable uh, the static website hosting uh, it, we, we need to go to properties uh, first then uh, we need to scroll down all the way to the bottom and here we can see like by default the static website uh, is uh, disabled uh, here let's uh, click on edit let's now select enable uh, so here uh, as you can see like uh, we need to mention the uh, landing page and the error uh, file exactly uh, how it is so let's duplicate this uh, you can name it anything basically uh, but uh, the file should be in our uh, s3 uh, bucket basically so if uh, we go to our s3 bucket you can see the name error dot uh, index dot html and error dot html so let's uh, give it the exact name uh, better to copy paste uh, because it's easy to copy paste let's copy paste let's uh, copy paste the error dot html as well let's paste it looks good so let's uh, click on save changes now so yeah we are almost uh, done so if we uh, scroll down a bit all the way down here we'll get uh, one link so let's uh, click on this button so yeah cloud guru amit welcomes you this this was our landing page uh, let's now uh, duplicate this page to check uh, whether the error.html works or not let's give it a slash and i'll uh, type some random thing which is i know is not defined so it should technically give an error page let's check it out yep we got error 404 so this is our error page cloud guru error it's uh, very easy to implement um, static website hosting using s3 just remember that uh, amazon s3 is generally used for static website hosting and generally we use uh, cloud front as well regarding it but we'll cover it later in this section all right let's look at this question we'll first look at option a 
Option E says establish a new S3 bucket with server side encryption using customer provided keys also known as SSC. So using server side encryption using customer provided keys would reduce AWS KMS cost but the downside is that it would increase the operational overhead which is against the goal of the equation if we look here hence incorrect choice let's look at option b b says create a new s3 bucket with server side encryption using amazon s3 managed keys also known as sac s3 so this solution will meet the requirements with least operational overhead because it reduces the cost associated with aws kms keys amazon s3 managed keys are free and do not incur any additional cost so this can be the potential answer let's park this let's now look at option c c says use aws cloud hsm to store the encryption keys cloud hsm is one of the most expensive services in aws this would not be the uh, cost effective solution as uh, required by the question therefore option c is out Let's move to option D. D says implement the S3 intelligent tiering storage class for the S3 bucket. Set up an S3 intelligent tiering archive configuration to the transition objects that are not accessed for 90 days to S3 Glacier Deep Archive. So if we read the uh, question carefully, there is a clear mention the objects are frequently accessed. If we look here. We don't require S3 intelligent tiering because S3 intelligent tiering is used when uh, the access patterns are unknown. But in our case, we already know the access pattern that is objects are accessed frequently. Secondly, this option do not address the issue of high AWS KMS cost as required by the question. Therefore, we'll eliminate this. We are left out with option B and we'll log this. Alrighty, let's look at this question now. We'll first look at option A. Option A says modify the course configuration on the S3 bucket. So course means cross origin resource sharing. If you look at option A, the course error is not occurring when accessing the S3 bucket, but the application is making a request to the API gateway. Modifying the cross origin resource sharing configuration would have no impact on it so therefore we'll reject this let's move to option b b says enable the course setting in aws web application firewall so aws waf or web application firewall does not have a course setting course is handled at the application level as per the question it's a api gateway not the firewall level we'll reject this option let's move to option c c says enable the core setting on the api gateway api endpoint so cross origin resource sharing is enforced by the browser at the application level and the error is occurring when the application is making a request to the api gateway therefore the api gateway needs to be included uh, with correct course headers in its response so we'll park this option for the time being let's look at option d d says enable the course setting on the lambda function so lambda function do not directly handle course course needs to be handled at the api gateway level which is invoking the lambda function therefore incorrect choice will lock option c as the correct answer all right, all right, let's look at question number 14 now. Option E says implement a lambda edge function that is triggered by a view response event. So this would only trigger the function after the image has been viewed, which is too late to prevent a poor user experience as per the question. So we'll reject this. Let's move to option B. B says implement a lambda edge function that is triggered by an origin response event. So this would only trigger the function after an image has been requested which is again too late to prevent a poor user experience 
B is out. Let's move to option C. C says use an S3 event notification that invokes an AWS Lambda function. This looks to be the best solution because it allows the company to integrate their Python logic to detect corrupt images immediately after they are ingested into the S3 bucket, thus minimizing the latency between data ingestion and serving. So we'll park this option aside. Let's move to option D. D says use an S3 event notification to trigger an AWS step function state machine. So while this could technically work, it would be overkill for this use case as um, and uh, would likely introduce unnecessary complexity and cost. Therefore, incorrect choice. Let's reject this. We'll lock option C as the correct answer for this. All right, this looks to be easy question as it's uh, related uh, to EC2 and uh, kind of uh, decoupling. So let's first look at option A. A says utilize Amazon S3 web hosting, Amazon API gateway for database uh, API services, Amazon SQ, SQ for uh, ordering queue and Amazon ECS for business logic. Use Amazon SQS for uh, long polling to retain field orders. Amazon ECS is a more complex service than AWS Lambda for running business logic and it may not minimize operational cost effectively as required by the question. Also, while Amazon SQSQ long pooling can help with retaining failed orders, it is not as effective as dead letter queue. Therefore, incorrect choice. We have seen dead letter queue previously in previous parts of this series by doing a hands-on as well. So you might have observed that. So let's reject this. Let's look at option B now. So B uses employee use uh, employee AWS Elastic Beanstalk for web hosting. So I'll be just uh, reading out the uh, incorrect points uh, so, I'll, so as to help you uh, figure out easily. AWS Elastic Beanstalk for web hosting is an easy to use service for deploying and scaling web application and services but it not uh, but it might not be as cost effective as using S3 for uh, web hosting. We'll look uh, at web hosting in a later part of this series. I'll be demonstrating you a hands-on for web hosting. So S3 is famous for web, web hosting. We'll, uh, we'll do it. Uh, also, for now, if you look at uh, here, Amazon MQ for ordering queue. So Amazon MQ is a managed message broker service which is more complex and potentially more expensive than using Amazon SQSQ for ordering queuing. So they, they, this is again uh, an odd one out or uh, not required. And the third point if you look at option B, Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive to store failed orders. So again if you look Amazon S3 Deep uh, Archive is used for long-term data archiving and is not suitable for retaining failed orders. Therefore, this option is definitely incorrect. We'll look at option C now. C says use Amazon S3 for web hosting. This looks good. AWS AppSync for database API services. Again, looks good. Amazon SQSQ for ordering queue. Looks good. And AWS Lambda for business logic. Uh, definitely yeah, looks good because it's not complex for business logic. Retain failed orders using Amazon SQSQ dead letter queue. So this step or this uh, setup ensures that each component can scale independently and that failed orders are not lost but are instead sent to the dead letter uh, queue for later processing. So this looks good. We'll keep this option aside. We'll move to option D. D says leverage Amazon Lightsail for web hosting, Amazon SES for order queuing. So Amazon Simple Email Service, also known as Amazon uh, SES, is not designed for ordering queue, order queuing. Also, if we look here, uh, read the next uh, one out. Amazon Open Search Service uh, to store field orders. Amazon Open Search Service is a search and analytics engine and may not be efficient 
or cost effective way to retain failed orders again so we'll reject this let's lock option c as the correct answer let's bring the heat to the snow we'll first look at option a option a says develop an aws lambda function that denies access to all unauthenticated users schedule an event to trigger this lambda function so this approach would require additional resources and could potentially disrupt applications normal workflow which is against the requirement of the question if we read here therefore incorrect choice let's now move to option b b says check the permission of the aws trusted advisor bucket and implement the suggested actions aws trusted advisor uh, we have uh, seen in cloud practitioner basic level uh, series of mine that it is like a personal assistant which provides generic best practices using aws trusted advisor might not immediately remediate the issue required by the question the trusted advisor checks are broad and may not specifically address the issue of public access to the files therefore incorrect choice let's move to option c c says execute a script that applies a private acl to all objects in the bucket so running a script that puts a private acl on all the objects in the bucket could potentially disrupt the application's normal workflow especially if the application relies on specific acl settings for its operation therefore again incorrect choice we are left out with option d d says use the uh, block public access feature in amazon s3 and set the ignore public acl option to true for the bucket so the block access uh, block public access feature in uh, amazon s3 provides settings to override any public access settings that might be set at the bucket or object level thus ensuring that the data is not publicly accessible moreover this would not disrupt the application's normal workflow or the operation as it can still generate signed urls for authenticated users to access their report therefore this looks to be good and it is the correct answer so please 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 don't go away let's meet in part 4 of this series where we'll be doing hands on related to extract transform load using aws native service which is called glue